making the pancakes. And I don't want to uh, talk too much, but here we use this uh, controller that we wrote. It basically just opens up uh, every container here. Um, you see, we were tipping with the fingertips against this because we had a good laser perception, but still this can be off by a centimeter or two. And by just using this tactile feedback of touching the handle before we grasp it, we have a pretty, well, we have a pretty good estimate of where it is actually, and then we can just grasp it right away. Here you see how it's always just pulling some, somewhat in a direction, and this is using the compliance. So basically we just pull and see where it goes. It will always follow the, the trajectory of the uh, smallest uh, force. And then we are adjusting with the feeling of the fingertips the orientation. These handles are very good for that, of course. We can feel how the, the center of the pressure in the fingertips changes when the head And when it's occasional or sliding. And the problem you also saw that the base was moving during this. So often we run into the problem that we open some container and then we run into the, the, the limit of the, of the robot's capability with the arm. And then of course we just move the base a little. And, and this is not very well integrated. You see it's first going like this a little and then with the arm. So this is not really nice so far, but it works. And this would be our idea of what to do first. So if we come into a kitchen, we just scan the whole kitchen with a laser, try to detect handles, and then pull and see what's going on. And then we would look into this, these containers and find out what's in there, and write that down in the semantic map again. So now we were also calculating a pose for the base. You see it's very, very restricted space there. So we had to calculate a pose how we could find a, a, a place for the robot to, uh, to execute this trajectory of getting out this bottle. And now we will just go along the trajectory that we had before to close the container again. So, I hope it's not, yes, we a little of the And, yeah, this was not really a trailer we are in fighting with the sometimes. Um, and just as a warning, uh, Villa Garage tries to make these robots very safe and one uh, point of this policy is that whenever something in the real-time system behaves strange, you just shut down the, the motors. So this happens about like once a day when we use the robot a lot. That some package in, from some EtherCAD controller comes like a few milliseconds late and it's just dropping the plate on the ground. And I mean this is just safety policy we can't get around and I hope it's not happening. Usually it's not happening too often. But if you see that, uh, you're warned. So it could happen that it just drops, and then you see it just going. And another thing I would like to say, uh, different from this, from Rosie, which has a lot of, uh, uh, how do I say, high-end uh, torque sensors in the joints. This robot uh, uses springs to uh, to implement the compliance. So the arms are actually implemented with two gas dent uh, springs. Um, so we can also get into some strange dynamic behavior. Of course, if you actually have the plate, hopefully with a pancake to serve a fully robot made pancake. So that's my colleague Alex. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is replace the pancake mix by live one. Liquid. So, really? Okay, so uh, this is Tom Rosi, I'm going to show it to you later, and we're going to be repeating this demo, I hope, during the whole lunch. <laughs> uh, so if you are not in front, uh, don't worry, you'll be able to see it again later. Um, so you're making pancake for everyone? I, well, we might run out of milk, <laughs> but I hope everybody gets a piece. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is Rossi our robot. We have built it from scratch from um, the split component. So, as you see, we have the Just very nice uh, Luca high yeah. arms. <laughs> and we have the we have impedance control on these arms, active one, and um, also on the fingers. And uh, we're going to start with the demo. So, I'll be able to show you here what the robot actually see. And for those who cannot see it, then I'll explain verbally. Okay, so. Green light. Uh, okay. So we have a set of scripts, and now it's going to execute a plan to, to actually make pancake. The first thing it's going to look for is for a pancake mix. And um, what you see here is the 3U. So those are the 3D points. 
and uh, it will plan a trajectory and move towards it. So this is recalculated every millisecond because we might push on the arms and might need to adjust if it's blocking against something. Okay. So um, right now it's gonna search on the table for a pancake maker. Okay. And we're gonna try to drop the register in the center. So this is um, <laughs> So the first one was using the thermal, uh, the time of flight camera, and this one is using the, the images to find a pancake maker. Okay. And now we can see if we actually managed to make a pancake. Okay, good. So that looks good. Like uh, <laughs> the is the way it's, uh, that it feels on its hand to decide how long it can uh, pour. So, for example, when the bottle is very empty, it's important that it splits more and just and it waits a bit longer. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our spatula or our tool. Okay. And um, here we check. Or by uh, yeah, looking at for it again. Now, it looks a bit bigger. You see, we, we actually made a huge mount for it. And the reason is that these hands are about twice as big as in my hands. And they don't have a one degree of freedom that we have with this. this one. And what the robot is doing right now is uh, it looked at it um, and it tried to get an idea of where the spatula is relative to its hand. Okay. And uh, right now it will probably stick for a little bit. 20, 22 seconds. Okay, for 22 seconds because uh, we have told it that one side of the pancake needs around 90 seconds to cook. Okay. And now it's basically waiting. So hopefully next year we'll have two pancake makers and then we'll have uh, cereal production. <laughs> pancake. Okay. Um, and now here comes the part where I hope everything works. So this is uh, this is the tricky part for a robot, and that's flipping a pancake because it requires a certain dexterity. Okay. So we're gonna see. It should detect the collision with the pancake, which it did with the pancake maker. And now it leaves. And now it's gonna flip. Yes. <laughs> Now we have to wait. <laughs> this is the boring part of the, of the demo because uh, this part takes about nine seconds. Um, but in the meantime, the PR2 is already preparing the table, as you see over here, and it has brought um, cutlery. And uh, the next thing we will do is uh, put it down, and then when that pumpkin is ready, it will pick it up already over here. So, yeah, if you have uh, questions. And now comes the second difficult part for a road. I don't know if we'll manage this time. So we have to hope. Uh, and that's actually getting the pancake off the surface. And this is difficult because um, right now everything is um, very slippery. And, uh, okay, we have a little problem. <laughs> <laughs> and before that, here, yeah, put it. So the difficult part is that um, once the pancake has cooked and everything is set on, you have to push it really quickly and then the dynamics of the arm play an important role here. So we haven't done, uh, we haven't gotten that perfectly right. Okay. So now the PR2 is using a circle detector to find the plate and it will lift it. So here's also the fingertips, I'm just waiting for the fingertips to touch and you see it's very like, it takes very delicate touch. I give back to the touch. touch. <coughs> you saw that it was just going to the plate until it touches. This is also what we humans do, I think. We only have like, a, we have pretty good vision, but it's just easier to go to the table and then move until we touch it. And this fingertips, they actually manage to, to tell me when I just have a very slight touch, and the dynamic is really like up to 150 newton, which is the maximum force of the computers. That's all I wanted to say. Alex is not Okay, so, and now, um, somebody will be lucky and will be able to eat robotic punches first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look very hungry. <laughs> I guess uh, something that is different about this task 
we in previous demos we used to talk, uh, show peak and place, but now we have a, a real time constraint because the pancake burns <laughs> if something doesn't work. Okay, so um, okay, work. Okay. Thank you. So, okay.